Hi, I'm Dave Merchant from the Acrobat user community, and today I'd like to introduce some of the best practices when you're making accessible PDF files from Microsoft Word. I'll be using Acrobat 10 and Office 2007 today, but the same techniques will work in earlier versions. Accessibility is not simply about catering to users who have screen readers. The main thing an accessible PDF file has is a system of tags showing the logical order of elements. That's the order in which you as a human would read the content of a document. Following an article as it flows between columns or different boxes on a page, understanding the difference between a heading, a caption, a table and a block of paragraph text. When these tags have been defined, then the software understands how to put this content back together into a single flowed column. That's used by screen readers and braille printers, but also mobile devices will often reflow a page into a single column to display on a small screen, and they need to know the order to put things into. When you're copying content or you're exporting part or all of a PDF file into a different format, then the same rules apply, and you'll often find if you're trying to select text on a non-tagged PDF file, you can get some very strange things happening, because there's no inherent order in the content of a PDF, as for example there is in a web page. Without a tag system, the software has to guess the order and it uses page position, left to right, top to bottom. For most documents that isn't going to work properly. It will also include everything. Screen readers on an untagged document will for example read all the headers and footers. You don't want that to happen, so the tag system also has an important role in defining artifacts. These are elements which we don't want screen readers to read, we don't want to be copied when we're copying and pasting contents of the document. It also makes sense to do as much of this as possible in Word so that the least amount of work needs to be done on the PDF. PDF is an end destination file format so you want to be able to change your Word document, save a new PDF and not have to start reapplying all of your tags in Acrobat. It is possible to do everything after the fact with the PDF file, and we have other videos to demonstrate that, but ideally we want it all done in the original file. Some of these workflows might seem a little onerous, but once you get into the habit, they actually make far better and more technically correct Word documents, even if you never make them into PDFs. We're going to make sure we use styles and headings properly. We'll only ever use tables to display grids of data, not to lay out columns of text on a page. We need to add descriptions to visual elements such as images. Make sure hyperlinks behave properly. We need to fill in the document properties in Word so that the PDF also has a title and a description and keywords because people who are blind need to be able to search for PDF files without relying on a thumbnail image. And we need to be careful what we do with headers and footers. By default, when you export a tagged PDF from Word, the headers and footers will be made into artifacts, so they'll be ignored by the screen reader and by copy and paste operations. When you run an accessibility check, if you've got active things in your headers and footers, such as hyperlinks, that can start causing problems because it will be flagged as something which the user might need to click on, but which is in an inaccessible part of the document. Finally, we need to make sure we export using Acrobat's PDF Maker plugin, not the print menu. If you print to PDF from within any file format, you simply get a virtual printout. All of this internal structure is removed, so we need to make sure we save as rather than print. Now, our goal is not solely to pass the accessibility checks. This document has tags, it's been exported from Word, it will pass every accessibility check we throw at it, but it's still broken, quite horribly broken. If we look at it from a distance, you can see we have an article that flows down the right-hand side and another article in blue in the bottom left corner. But if I start trying to select something, and I'll grab this area of text, we're okay up to the word team, I should be selecting the word inadvertent next in the sequence, but I actually start grabbing all of the extra stuff on the left so the logical order might be present, but it's still wrong. And that's one of the issues with the accessibility checking tools. They don't understand the meaning behind content. They simply check if the tags are present. The reason this isn't working properly is down to the way we constructed it in Word. So let's have a look at our Word file. And the reason all of this stuff is being selected in the wrong order is because we used a table. If I now 
turn on the borders, you can see that we have a set of cells with the text dropped into. Tables are always read left to right, top to bottom in row order. So when the accessibility tool reaches the word team, the next thing it's going to do is open the table and start with this first cell and start reading the word safety. When it gets to the end of this cell, it will start reading the word inadvertent and so on. So tables cause a huge problem with layouts. We should really be using a text box and letting the rest of the page content flow around it. You'll also notice that there are some blank lines. Instead of using paragraph spacing to define our paragraph breaks, we've just put an empty line in. That's going to cause an empty tag to appear in the PDF. It's not a critical issue, but it can cause problems when you're copying and pasting certain parts of the document. If we look at styles, uh, this style at the top is defined as a title which is fine in word senses, but a title isn't actually a heading. It's a bit of a different beast. So it isn't going to be transferred into Acrobat as a heading tag. This bit here isn't even a heading. It's the normal style, but with manual character changes. And that's something we really want to try and avoid. So we want the document to identify that this is heading one, heading two, heading three, etc. With tables, we also need to be careful when we produce a genuine table that we take allowance of the reading order. You can organize the tags in Acrobat to read a table column by column, but by default it will go row by row. So if you look at this table, there's no particular reason why we have to have this laid out in this order, but if we read this in Acrobat, it would say John Jacobs, Marty Robinson, Conrad Sims, Marketing Manager, Events Manager, Site Manager, 866. Not the easiest thing to understand. If we swap the rows and columns, it will actually say John Jacobs, Marketing Manager, 866, etc. So rather than trying to do advanced fiddling with the tags, sometimes we just rearrange our content to go with the flow, quite literally. Finally, at the very bottom, there's our footer, and we have a website link. Now, Acrobat will convert that automatically into a hyperlink, but it won't style it. And also, all of the headers and footers, when we convert to PDF are going to be flagged as artifacts. So the accessibility checker is going to complain that there's a hyperlink in an inaccessible part of the page. Similarly with these email addresses, they will be converted automatically in Acrobat and Reader, but we need them to be genuine links so that they have an identifiable type of style applied to them to make them look different and behave different to the rest of the document page. So let's look at a version where we fixed all of this and done things properly. Now, this shouldn't look a great deal different. That's kind of the plan, but we've followed all the rules this time. So our headings use genuine heading styles. So they're going to be recognized as heading tags in the PDF. Instead of using blank lines to separate the paragraphs, we've now added a gap at the start of each paragraph in the normal style. If I just click the format button and choose paragraph, that's where you get at the options and I've added eight points before each paragraph that gives me the gap without putting extra content in. The main thing is instead of using a table to flow this text, I've now just put it in a text box to hold my second article. I've given it a border so that I'm not relying on font color to differentiate between the two articles. That's a section 508 thing. So the main text now flows past in a single sequence. And I've used the row by row order for the table to reflect the way that the screen reader is going to read it. So I don't have to start fiddling with the tags. I've also taken the web link out of the footer where it would have been artifacted and put it in the main body of the document. So it's now accessible in both senses of the word, but it's still not a web link. It's just text on a page and I need to convert it into a hyperlink and also do these email addresses as well. There is a auto format tool in Word, but it's not on the ribbon. So open the little button next to the quick access toolbar and choose more commands. And then in the drop down list, choose commands not in the ribbon. Scroll down a little bit and you'll find auto format dot dot dot. Grab that and say add and click OK. And that now gives you the tool, even though it wasn't in the ribbon, so I can click auto format under options. The only thing I want checked is the last 
box which says formatting internet links. All of the styles I've already done. Thank you very much. I don't want those rearranged. So I'll auto format now, click OK, and there's all my email addresses converted and the web address at the top all in one go. Cool trick worth remembering. Finally, Alt tag for this image. Right click the image, choose size. Yeah, I know, I know. And the alt text lives on that tab under the size menu. And that's where you put in a description that the screen reader will announce when it gets to that image. Every image needs one, otherwise the accessibility check will fail. So we are good to go. I will save this file and under the Acrobat ribbon, under preferences, the critical thing is to make sure this last box is ticked so we turn on tagging. If we don't put tagging in, frankly, all of this has been a waste of your time and mine. And we also, under bookmarks, can specify which of the bookmark styles are going to be converted. In other words, at the moment, heading one elements are going to be converted into a PDF bookmark. Nothing else is. I can turn these off and on at will just by clicking the boxes. In a large document, it is important to add bookmarks so that people can find sections easily without having to read the entire document from start to finish. I will leave this as it is, even though I've only got one page. It's just to prove a point. And I can create my PDF either by clicking this button, Create PDF, in the ribbon, or from the main Office button, I can choose Save as Adobe PDF. I do not want to go through and print to PDF because I'll lose all the tags. So Save as Adobe PDF, I will save it and view it in Acrobat. Well, it certainly looks the same as it did five seconds ago, so that's a good start. And we can select our text and it now flows around as it's supposed to. If we want to see the tag structure, then from the navigation side pane, if we right click and choose tags, we can open the tags and see how they've been assigned. And if we pull down this little options menu and choose highlight content, then as we select a tag, it'll get a blue border around it in the page. So we can see the reading order that a screen reader or a reflow device would use. Figure, heading, 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 paragraph, 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 marvellous, table, paragraph, second article, quote at the bottom, and you'll notice there isn't a tag for the text in the footer because it's being treated as an artefact. You may wonder how we got that text box to sit where it is in the flow between the last paragraph and the quote. And the answer is quite simple. Whenever you insert a text box in Word, it is attached into the flow of the document based on where your cursor was. So when I drew that text box, my cursor was sitting at the end of the word direction. And so that's where it's been inserted in the flow. You can move it around, but it makes sense to get it right to start with. Now there's two things we need to do to this file to get it to pass the standards. Firstly, under File Properties, Command or Control D, on the Advanced tab, just make sure we've got the language defined. Sometimes it comes through, sometimes it doesn't. And also, when we start pressing the Tab button on our keyboard, we select all of the links in the file one at a time. Now, we're doing it in the right order, but Word doesn't assign an order to hyperlinks. So, at the moment, Acrobat is kind of guessing, and we need to confirm that it's guessing it correctly. So, from the Pages menu, select one or all of the pages, right click and choose page properties and agree to use the document structure, i.e. the tags, when you're deciding the order of the tabs. Click OK, save the file and we are now done and dusted and we can run an accessibility check to prove the point. Open the tools pane, bring open the accessibility tab if it's not already visible. Now it'll always pass a quick check because that just looks for tags. If we run a full check, making sure we're showing the report so we can see the results, I'll start with running Adobe's own check. Click Start Checking. It's passed. What a surprise. How about Section 508? No, oh, failure. Well, no, actually, it hasn't. If you look at the summary, everything has either passed or was not applicable, apart from Part C. And part C of 508 says that whenever you're using color to highlight the meaning of something, you have to have an alternative way of telling that that content has a special meaning. So, for example, when we're dealing with our web links, we're blue, but we're also underlined. So we are following the color rules, 
but the software can't check that because it doesn't understand the meaning behind the text it's looking at. So under the full check, we can actually turn off part C and say that we've checked that ourselves and Acrobat will confirm that the document passes everything else. So it is completely 508 compliant. We just simply have to help out to prove the point. Now, this is a long video, but not nearly long enough to cover such a huge topic as accessibility. So it would be nice if there was somewhere you could go where all of the resources were gathered together for you. And you've already got the link. From the help menu in Acrobat, choose online support, accessibility resource center. And that will open Adobe's Accessibility Resource Center with details of how to work accessibly with all of their applications, including Acrobat and PDF, and how to deal with advanced topics such as tagging tables so they flow in a different order, etc. I've been Dave Merchant for AcrobatUsers.com. Thanks for listening.